And we've a film in 35 minutes here on BBC One, starring Peter Ustinov as the great Belgian detective Hercule Poirot, exercising his famous little grey cells to solve the murder of an American heiress aboard a cruiser in Agatha Christie's Death on the Nile. Christmas on BBC One and Barry Norman comes clean about that American creation, the soap opera. In Britain, we've long been accustomed to nighttime soaps, Dallas, Dynasty, Coronation Street, the East Enders. But what we don't have is the daytime soap, running one hour a day, five days a week, every week. You're marrying a 22-year-old virgin. Dangerous. Takes on a whole new meaning. The man in the hand-me-down wig is black, trying to pass for white. God, I love you. Is his wife in for a surprise on their wedding night? You need uh, one woman who has an illegitimate child or an illegitimate pregnancy that will end in miscarriage or abortion before the child is born. And you need a villain and a villainess. And they desperately want to be loved. Barry Norman's Guide to American Soaps is at 10.25 tonight on BBC One. The distinctive uniform of the Yeoman of the Guard graces BBC Two now as they follow the Queen's bodyguard on its duties while upholding the dignity and grandeur of the English crown in this its 500th anniversary year. Leaving a lasting impression here on BBC One, the first of a new series of Les and Dustin's Laughter Show. Walk right, sir? Uh, yes, all right, go on then. Right, yeah. <laughs> There's a sparrow. Oh, yeah, a sparrow. Oh, and look at Chaffinch. Oh, and down there, there's a thrush. Chaffinch, thrush. Dustin, look at the crane. That's a heron. It isn't, it's a crane. That is a heron. Tonight, I'd like to tell you how wonderful I am. <laughs> now, I know that there'll be a lot of you out there thinking, oh, no, not this old rubbish again. Well, if I may say this, if you'll just let me... <laughs> Yes, hello indeed. Do you know, Les, I was sorting through some old newspapers last night. Yeah? Changing the bedclothes. <laughs> well, I knew you were coming to stay, and... Uh, do you know, it was fascinating reading all about uh, the incidents that were making news last year. I mean, there was Jimmy Cricket with his new series. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a letter off my mother. She says, Dear Jimmy, I'm sending you three Wellington boots. Because I've heard since you were in England, you've grown another foot. Come in. Come in. I rang the hospital today. I said, My wife is in labor. They said, Is this the first child? I said, No, this is the husband. <laughs> Hey ho, do you know, do you know I remember my birth? Uh, well, I should do, I was there. <laughs> and so was the midwife, Hot Water Hattie, <laughs> and the gynecologist, Pop It Out Peregrine. <laughs> uh, and my dad was there for my birth, which was very decent of him, considering he wasn't there for the conception. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, 
anyway, he, he said he wanted to be there to deliver me himself. After all, he was a milkman. <laughs> Do you know, I ended up on the front step with two bottles of gold cap, a small brown loaf and a carton of prune yoghurt. <laughs> no wonder I have trouble with my legs. <laughs> yeah. Hi. David Essex here. Yeah. I spent my summer trying to keep a mutiny going. A bit like that geezer Geoffrey Archer. The thinking man's Roland Rat. Yeah. Do you know, he said to Mrs Thatcher, Hey Maggie, do you know how much I'll get paid for writing one of my books? And she said, Big money! Yeah. What you doing? I'm bouncing about like yeah. Max. Are you, um, are you the Mad Max? Yeah, I'm Mad Max. Yeah, I'm Mad Max too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 never mind. Boom, boom, Mad Max too, Greg Granville. <laughs> we just give us your uh, uh, ru Russell uh, uh, hearty. Stir, 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 Forthwith. Never in a month of Sundays. Now, we're a Russell Harty. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And when one looks back on one summer, uh, one remembers that my very good friend and neighbour, Oliver Reed, did, did he not get <laughs> married? Uh, a reporter asked me, does he still come round? I said, he does if you throw a bucket of water over. 